Now we're moving on to looping over a range of cells. So let's say if I have a new worksheet here, I'm going to rename it for each loop. And let's say I have some data. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, we don't even need data. Let's just say I have some numbers. I have 200, I have 700, I have 100 over here, I have 300 over here, I have 40, I have 5, I have 7. Um, what I want to do is select a range, any range. So if I select this range, I want this to be the range I want to do something with. If I select this range, I want this to range to be I do something with. Once I select a range, I want to be able to run a macro that will highlight any any value in this range of cells that is over 200. So what we want to do is something like this. Uh, okay, sub for each loop range ranges. Uh, what we want to do is declare some objects. So I'm going to do dim RNG as range. Just like in a previous video, we declared a, a object to be a worksheet. You can declare an object or you can declare a variable to be a range object. So this RNG is now a range object. And I also want to declare another range object, dim our cell as range and that's because cells in the worksheet are actually interpreted in VBA as ranges and you know this by doing something like this range a1 dot value so you could have a cell you could have an individual cell but look what's around it it's this range function so it's actually uh, a cell is interpreted as a range so that's why I, I, I'm telling you that this R cell is gonna, it's gonna stand for a cell on the worksheet, or it's gonna stand for a cell on the worksheet. So now what do I want to do? Well, I told you that I, I'm gonna select something, and I want to set my selection to, to this range object here, RNG. So to do that, I use this keyword set. And you use this set keyword when you're dealing with objects. So anytime you're dealing with uh, objects and you want to assign something to an object, you use the set keyword and then the equal sign like this. Set RNG equal to selection. Now what is this selection? This selection is going to be whatever I have selected here. So in this case, this is my selection. Or if I only select these four cells, this would be my selection. My selection, look at it, it's a range of four cells. And if I select this big range, it's a range of this many cells. So that's what this selection is. It's going to be however many cells I have selected on the worksheet. And then I'm assigning that to this range object here. Here's my range object. To do that, though, since I'm dealing with an object, and how do you know I'm dealing with an object? It's because this thing, this range, is not a, a primitive data type like integer, boolean, date, time, all the things we've seen earlier on in the course, uh, like long variables, everything here on the variables tab, those were all, in that first video, those were all primitive data types. Now, this range is not a primitive data type. It's actually an object because it's this RNG, since it's a range object, it, it's derived from the range class, right? Remember how objects are instances of classes. So now we have a range object. We can assign it whatever we selected. And then what we can do is do a for each loop for each R cell in RNG next R cell. Now what are we doing here? This loop 
is going to loop over all the cells in this range. Remember in the for each uh, introduction video, I said you're going to have a collection of things, a collection of objects to be more specific. In this case, our collection of objects is the cells in our selection. So here's my, here's my collection of objects. It's actually all these cells that I highlighted. And what we're going to do is loop over this selection by doing this. You know, we're going we're gonna to look at this cell and look at this cell and look at this cell and look at that cell and so on until that whole selection is looped through with that for each loop. And each time through the loop, this R cell is going to be able to tell us what's the value in each cell because this R cell is going to be is going to be uh, is going to be taking on whichever cell is going to loop through all the cells in this range collection. So now what we can do is do R cell dot select and we can write an if statement so this is going to select the cell in the range now we can do an if statement if our cell dot value if it's greater than 200 then I want to do something and I'll put an else statement here and then I'll put an end if so what do I what do I want to do if the cell is if the cells value is greater than 200. Well, what I want to do is change the color of the cell. So to do that, I'm going to use this with statement with uh, selection dot interior and with. So this with statement, it it allows you to put a an object here, and it says like with this out or with I'm sorry with whatever is uh, over here you can do stuff inside the with statement so in this case with the select the selected interior I want to make the color the dot color property equal to six five five three five now how did I know this well I use the macro recorder and uh, changed the the cell to the color I wanted and it turns out that color was 65535 but what's going on here is I select a cell and then with that selection I want to change the dot interior I want to change the interior property and I do that by accessing the interior property with the dot operator so with the interior I want to change the, the color property and to do that I use the dot operator again so I do uh, dot color is equal to 65535 and if it's not greater than 200 then I want to Then I want to set the color, I want to set the pattern equal to XL none. And again, this was all done using the, uh, using the macro recorder to get this, to get this done. And I'll show you right now how, how I did that. I just went to developer record macro and okay, it's gonna, it's gonna record macro two and I go here, I go to home, let's say I want it to be yellow, and then let's say I want it to be nothing. If I go back to the editor and I look in module one, look what happens here. This is macro two, that's what I just, this is what it just recorded. Notice the dot color is 65535, and then down a little bit more, it says pattern XL none. And remember I told you that the macro recorder sometimes includes stuff that you don't need. So I, don't, I didn't need these lines, so I deleted them. And I didn't need these lines, so I deleted them. I also didn't need these lines because I didn't change anything with the uh, pattern index or anything like that. So I just basically took this stuff. I, 
just took I took this code and modified it a little bit and there there it is I mean that's how you develop code when you don't know how to do stuff go to the macro recorder record it and now you know how to change the color of a cell and then make it change to nothing so let's uh, let's run this code so if I select if I select this range and then I go to my code window notice that the, the range I selected is still highlighted so when I run this 700 700 is highlighted yellow right and if I highlight this range go to my macro and run it again 300 is now um, highlighted because it's there both of those numbers are greater than 200 but what's actually happening here is I'm looping through this whole selection and checking the value I'm checking the value right here our cell dot value and I'm, che I'm checking if it's greater than 200 and I'm also selecting uh, the cell but you don't see it because it's so fast the other thing I could do is um, I could show you some of the things you can access with this R cell so if I do R cell dot address you can actually see the address of each cell in the range so let's do something like like let me just do this I'm going to do r cell dot value is equal to r cell dot address. So all I'm going to do is put the address of the cell in the range, and I'm going to put a breakpoint here. So I'm not going to I'm not going to run this code below, but I just want to select a range for you. Here's my range. I'm going to go to the code, and I'm going to run it, and it's going to stop here. But what it's what it's going to show you is that here we'll stop it here and we'll run it oops next our cell this should be sorry if we run this and we step through here's my highlighted range I'm gonna put the address of every cell in that range in the cell so right here I'm saying our cell dot address assign that to our cell dot value when I do that look what happened a10 that's the address of the cell now it's gonna to go to the next cell in the range and let's see where it goes it went this way a b10 you see what's happening so I have this range here and it's looping this way from here to here and then it's gonna go there so we can keep doing this and there's c10 and d10 and e10 and now let's see where it goes Oh, it went down there to A11. So it is. It's looping through this whole range. And if I just click Run, look what it did. It went from here. It went there, 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 there. So it went across the row, and then it went to the next row, and it went like that, and then it went like this. So that's what you can do with the with these for each loops. You can loop through ranges, and you could analyze stuff. You can you can check stuff with if statements like checking the value uh, you can use the address if you want and then you can highlight stuff you can use the macro recorder to basically figure out how to do anything with this range um, so that's that's what I wanted to show in this video and I hope you find it useful it is very useful because now you're able to loop through a collection of objects and that's really key before we were looping through you know in our other loops 
we were looping through uh, numbers and and checking conditions and stuff. But now we can loop th loop through actually objects, and we could do cool stuff like this. That that will come in handy, I'm sure, down the road. All right, on to the next video.